Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Basic Soup Babish Pasta. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Basics with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at pasta, one of the most beautiful and elegant dishes that you can create in your kitchen with little more than a table and a rolling pin. We're gonna take a look at a few ways to roll out and shape your pasta and a few sauces to flavor them with. Now, let's get down to basics. Basics with Babish and the all-new basicswithbabish.com are brought to you by Squarespace. Head there now to check out recipes from the show, kitchen equipment lists, my personal blog posts, and more. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order with offer code BABISH. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Okay, so we're going to start off by making pasta entirely by hand, no machines involved, grandma style, fork and egg, the whole deal. We're not going to measure anything either. This is something that you do by feel. I'm going to start by making a mound of flour on my countertop that I'm going to make a well in that I can crack two eggs inside of, two to three eggs, depending on how much pasta you want to make, and a little drizzle of olive oil optionally, a little bit of salt. Then grab your fork and get to beating those eggs like you're making a Sunday omelet. We want to be picking up little bits of flour every time with every stroke of the fork. Dumping little bits more in there as necessary. Once it starts to get too sticky to beat with a fork, grab a bench scraper and start folding everything towards the center. You can do this with your hands, but it's a much more messy operation. Once a shaggy dough starts to form, we're going to start kneading by hand for a solid 10 minutes. I hope it was leg day at the gym because you're going to get a little bit of an upper body workout. We're talking 10 minutes of pressing this guy into the countertop. And you can see that there's a bunch of leftover flour. That's totally okay. We're trying to incorporate enough flour so we get a dough that about the consistency of Play-Doh. We want it tacky but not sticky, smooth, supple, elastic. This is a great recipe to start learning how to not follow a recipe and do things by look and feel and smell and touch. And feel and touch are really the same thing. So anyway, we're wrapping this guy in plastic wrap and letting him sit at room temperature for at least 30 minutes. We want to let the gluten relax a little bit before we start rolling it out. In the meantime, I'm gonna make another kind of pasta dough, a semolina pasta that is going to be half all-purpose flour, half semolina flour. This is gonna result in a slightly different flavor, color, and texture, and is yet another example of how you're gonna put your own spin on this recipe. Just as before, we're dumping the flour out onto the worktop, making a little mound, making a crater in the center, dumping our eggs in, adding a little bit of olive oil. And while we're starting the dough the same way, we're gonna finish it this time just for fun in a pasta machine. Gotta make sure that we're covering as many techniques as possible, but this doesn't get us out of kneading duty. So same deal as before, we're beating our egg with a fork until it can't be forked no more, using our bench scraper to scrape everything into the center and kneading rigorously for 10 minutes. Get creative, throw an elbow drop in there and cease the kneading once the dough has become smooth smooth and elastic. Wrap in plastic wrap, you'll notice that I'm trying to get as little air in there as possible. Air in this situation is going to ruin your pasta dough. All right, so while that guy is resting for 30 minutes, let's get down to the old school by hand pasta dough. The first thing we're going to do is liberally flour everything. The pasta, your hands, the work surface, your rolling pen, your hair, your shoes, your dog, your cat, your goldfish. Then for a relatively small piece of dough like this one, we're going to cut it in half. If it's a little bit bigger, if you used four or five eggs, cut it into quarters. And now it's time to start gently rolling it out. We're gonna start by doing what we would do if we were using a pasta machine, which is laminating the dough a little bit, rolling it out, folding it into thirds, turning it 90 degrees, rolling it out again, folding it into thirds, maybe three times total before we start going for the big roll. That is, rolling it out until it's nice and thin, thin enough that you can almost see your hand through it. There's also advantages to different kinds of rolling pins. The dowel style that I was using before is great for getting a nice even roll, but a French style like this that's tapered at each end kind of helps you get a more even shape because when it starts getting deformed, you can use the center of the rolling pin to roll certain parts harder than others so you can make it at least closer to a rectangle. Once we've got the dough rolled out to our desired thickness and size, it's time to cut. I'm gonna start by cutting off the rough edges to give me a nice even rectangle. From here you could make lasagna noodles or filled pasta like ravioli or tortellini, but I'm gonna go simple today by loosely rolling up the dough and cutting it into nice wide 
fettuccine. Get a little sawing action in there with your knife because you don't want to press straight down because you're going to pinch the pasta together. If you find that once you're done cutting, your noodles aren't unfurling properly, just dust the dough sheet with a bit more flour before rolling it up. Now we're going to unfurl all of our noodles to make sure none of them have stuck together. Then once we've got everybody all unwound, we're going to lift up the noodles and toss them with a little bit of flour to make sure that they don't stick together. Make sure each strand is individually coated in flour and there you have it. Fettuccine made entirely by hand. Hang to dry or place under plastic wrap until ready to use. Now it's time to get cranking, so to speak with our pasta maker. Start similarly by dusting half of the dough with flour and laminating at least once before running through the machine. Then with the pasta machine on its widest setting, it's time to start running it through. This machine's widest setting is seven, so I wanna get it down to about a two or a three. That means we're running it through four to five times. Now it's gonna start getting pretty long halfway through the rolling process, so I recommend cutting it into two pieces and starting to work with those individually. And you can see on the thinnest setting that I wanna put it through, I think this is a two. It is thin and beautiful, just like the stuff we rolled out by hand, but we have an advantage here. It's a bit more uniform than what we can do with a rolling pin. So it makes it better for ravioli or for filled pastas where you need very exact dimensions. But as you can see, this pasta machine, like most others, comes with a cutting attachment. So we're gonna use this to make some good old fashioned linguine. Now, just like when cutting by hand, you wanna make sure to dust your dough with flour before running it through the blades. Otherwise, you're gonna end up pulling pasta out of the cutter, and then when you try to toss your noodles with flour, they get stuck together, you end up with a bird's nest, and you consider giving up cooking entirely, but this was an actual mistake that I made. I didn't do this for demonstration. I wanted you guys to see that mistakes are learning experiences. So this sheet I dusted with extra flour, and guess what? came out perfect. Nothing stuck together, and I decided to keep making the show. Just like the hand cut stuff, we're tossing these with flour, sort of forming into a nest, and then keeping on a baking sheet under plastic wrap until we're ready to use it. You can also put these in a Ziploc bag and freeze them, and then you'll have fresh pasta at the ready whenever you want it. And now it's time to finally cook the stuff. Fresh pasta cooks very quickly, so place in some salted boiling water for no more than probably 90 seconds. The best way to tell when it's done, taste it. None of this throwing it against the wall crap. That doesn't work. It has always baffled me that that is a trick for testing the doneness of pasta. Just put it in your mouth. So we're going to be treating our two different kinds of pasta two different ways today. Let's start with cacio e pepe, maybe one of my favorite pastas in the entire world. I'm grating equal parts Parmesan cheese. Make sure when you're shopping for it, you're buying Parmigiano Reggiano. And then over here, we've got some Romano cheese. This is funkier, sharper, saltier than Parmesan, and it's going to make for a great cacio e pepe. Now, I'm kind of breaking the rules a little bit here. I'm using butter. True cacio e pepe should not have butter, but it's just kind of training wheels a little bit. We're also going to use this as an opportunity to toast a little bit of freshly ground pepper before we add our cooked pasta. Try it and time your pasta cooking with the butter reaching a foamy stage. You want Want to not have this pasta hang out in the water for a second longer than it needs to. Now we're going to add our grated cheeses. You'll notice that they're very finely grated. We don't want it to be a huge effort to make these melt. And then I'd say a solid half cup of the pasta water. The pasta water is loaded with starch and that's going to help us make a more cohesive sauce. This is honestly something you can do with almost any sauce that you're finishing pasta and you can always add a little bit of pasta water to thicken and toss rigorously until all the cheese is melted and emulsified with the pasta water to create a creamy sauce. As is the way with all food ever made, I'm going to salt and pepper this to taste right at the end when I'm about to serve it to make sure that the seasonings are where they need to be. Always plate up your pasta with a carving fork for extra pasta XP. Twirl it into a little mound. We can go with a small portion here because it's very, very rich. And it wouldn't be cacio e pepe without a little bit extra pepe. We're going to put some freshly ground pepper right on top. And there you have it, a wonderful date night pasta made by hand. But is it my favorite pasta in the world? No, my favorite is a classic from Binging, Pasta al Olio. A pasta I'm obsessed with for its simplicity. Seven simple ingredients coming together to make something way greater than the sum of its parts. We're starting with a few cloves of garlic sliced thinly, a handful of flat leaf parsley, roughly chopped. I see a lot of comments that say, I made pasta al Olio, I didn't like it. 
Granted, I didn't have parsley or I didn't have lemon, and that's like driving a car with four wheels. Of course, your experience is going to be markedly worse. You've only got seven ingredients and one of them is missing. Anyway, before I get too heated, we are heating our garlic in some very low temperature olive oil, just enough to get a few bubbles going, and just long enough to see the garlic go a little blonde, and then we're going to immediately add our pasta. I'm doing all this with tongs because I want to get some of that pasta water in there that's going to help us create a more cohesive sauce. To which we're going to add our chopped parsley, the juice of one lemon, five down, two to go, freshly ground pepper, always go freshly ground, you cannot use that pre-ground stuff, and kosher salt. And as always, we are seasoning to taste. Taste it, see if it tastes good, see if it needs more. And to really get the sauce to come together, it's time to practice our tossing skills. This is gonna sort of help emulsify the sauce and prevent that dreaded pool of oil from forming in the bottom of your bowl. We're plating it up fancy again with a carving fork, just like John Favreau did in Chef. Hopefully you've got your Scarlett Johansson at the ready. Go with a little bit bigger portion this time because even though this has a lot of oil in it, non-cheese-based sauces always feel a lot lighter to me. And there you have it, the ultimate date night pasta. Why? Because you can probably make it right now with what you have in the fridge. And if you don't have it in the fridge, this is a great reason to stock up. You can use parsley, lemons, garlic for everything. If you use store-bought pasta, which is fine, this whole dish takes about 10 minutes to make, and it's a hell of a lot better than instant ramen, right? So I just want to talk a little bit about designing my new website with Squarespace. They have this really intuitive, easy to use platform that made it super easy even for somebody like me who's never done web design ever. They have templates, they do domains, they have really good customer services, really an all-in-one, one-stop shop for building a really slick website and I was really happy with the way mine came out. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter offer code BABISH to get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope you like the new site, the new show, and I can't wait to cook with you next week. Hey, guys, so I'm taking a week off from the stream for Thanksgiving, so join me the week after Thanksgiving to make this pasta along with me. Then we're going to resume a normal schedule up until the holiday season. Hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for all of you, and I'll see you guys in a few weeks.